Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Palmer's Picks. I'm Mrs. Palmer, and I'm going to read you a story. Today, I am on top of Mount Batty in Camden, Maine. You can see Camden uh, down behind me. So I thought that I would read The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen. Five miles off the coast of Maine and slightly overdue, a circus ship was steaming south in a fog as thick as stew. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The next day it was Boston for another circus show. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop the hook and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the helm where, the ca where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do! Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew into the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one knew was there. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. The captain said to Mr. Payne, pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We've got to save them too. The animals, yelled Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what are you, daft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me up into the raft. Now ferry me to safety, sir, before I die of cold. Don't question me, marked, barked Mr. Payne. Just do as you are told. Through chilly water, all night long, the animals swam on until they reached an island beach just before the dawn. They pulled themselves up, up on the shore, be draggled, cold, and beat, then staggered to the village on weary, wobbly feet. The people in the neighborhood had just begun to rise, and when they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant, but wait, how could that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? Soon animals were everywhere and into everything. There's an ostrich in the outhouse. There's a hippo in the spring. There's a tiger in the tulips. There's a lion on the lawn. There's a python in the pantry. It went on and on and on. Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found the alligator sleeping on his pile. And Mrs. Dottie Daly, who grew daisies by the bunch, discovered that the zebra had been eating them for lunch. And Miss Fanny Feeney found, according to the rumors, the silly little circus monkey swinging in her bloomers. That's underwear. But everything changed quickly, like the turning of the tide, the night the abbot's shed caught fire with Emma Rose inside. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The sight of smoke and fire triggered something in his head. He jumped through flames a thousand times back in his circus day, so he ran past all the people and he leapt into the blaze. Then everybody panicked, help, help, what can we do? When from the raging fire, something big burst into view. It was the most amazing sight and everybody froze when they saw the tiger saving little Emma Rose. The tiger's risky rescue changed everybody's mind. The animals weren't bothersome, the animals were kind. And so they lived together, side by side they got along. It didn't seem like anything could possibly go wrong. Then Little Red, the messenger, came running with the word. Apparently a circus ship had sunk from what he'd heard. The animals are from that boat. They swam in from the bay. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting and they quickly hatched a plan. No animal that came ashore would sail off with that man. 
The next day at the crack of dawn, a ship was at the pier, and up the lane marched Mr. Payne, whose voice was loud and clear. I am the circus owner. My ship sank in the murk. I've come to find my animals and put them back to work. He hiked until he came into the center of the town. His face was red. He scratched his head. He stood there with a frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low, but still he couldn't see the 15 circus animals of his menagerie. I wonder if we can find them, count them out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh, thirteen, missing two, I can't find the other two, hmm, they're there somewhere. He ran around the alleyways, he searched the village square, he even checked a chicken coop. His animals weren't there. Mr. Payne tuckered out, his heavy chest was heaving. Then Little Red stepped up and said, I think your boat is leaving. He ran off in a fit of rage, his ship was leaving sight. So he jumped into a rowboat and he rowed with all his might. And from that day, he liked to say, they liked to say their lives were free of pain. It was a happy, peaceful place upon that isle in Maine. I hope you liked this story. If you did, make sure you check it out at your local library. Thanks. Bye.